How are we going, everybody? I'm out in a little courtyard section of our garden on the other side of where the uh, apple trees and the plum trees and the beautiful rose arch that we've been working on. Have a look at it. Have a look how nice that has become. We've trained this specifically for the arch because initially it was really uh, rampant. It was growing everywhere. It was gnarly at the base. There was not a lot happening. But we, we got a couple of runners, three or three litres, as you can see there. And let me swing over the top as well. So this isn't the topic actually, this is a quick one. Climbing rose, we've got the main runner going up there and we've got all the size shoots coming off and we cut it always back to a couple of buds. And that's what we did last winter. We've done it to this one here and unfortunately, as you know, I don't complete all my tasks. I do half, half jobs, as my folks would used to say to me. Everything you do is half a job. You never complete everything. Well, in this case here, I think I've got a good reason and excuse for it because I've got too many to prune back. But I'm happy with this and it's nice and tight. And that's what you want with the growth to be, to stay nice and close to the main shoot there. So if you haven't pruned your rose, it's not too late to prune them. I mean, it is too late because you may miss the first flush of flowers, but like every rose plant, as soon as you cut it back and give it a good feed, up come the new buds and more flowers to follow from there on. So look after your roses. But back to the salvias, this is what I was talking about, the perennials here. This is a third or fourth year that I've had it in the ground. That's pineapple sage that's growing there. See how I've got all the old wood sticking up there? Now, it was standing, if I can go back in here, it was standing literally, well, here it is, is part of it, this tall. So the entire plant, and it's bloody beautiful. If you've never had pineapple sage, ah, oh, it is delightful. It's just so refreshing. It's grating desserts and even some drinks, you know, uh, liqueurs if you like. So it was this big here. Now, I was meaning to cut it down a lot earlier in the season before it started to sprout up. But you can see how it's already shot up all these stems here. And I've sacrificed some of the flowers, the early, sh early shoots of flowers. My bad on that there, but look, it is a tough, robust plant. And normally you'd cut it down pretty hard, and I have done it here. I could have gone harder in these sections here, but I thought, let me just leave this little bit going, because we've got a whole new section coming up here. All this here is bursting up from the ground. It will sucker up from the base, literally from the base and back up again. So this can be cut down to the ground because we've got plenty of new growth where it's you know absorbing the sun rays, you know, photosynthesizing and pushing energy back into the root system to grow bigger and stronger through the springtime as it goes. So cut back your sage or salvias, and I've got another one over there which I haven't cut as hard because I kind of like its structure on it. Um, it's growing off some of the shoots that I left a little bit higher than usual. Just over here, see this one here? So that's coming along as well. Now, I can probably remove that there. That one there's a bit of a nuisance, it's growing in the middle, and make room for all this new growth down the base. So if you have a look, look where the shoot's coming from at the bottom, down there. So that's where the strength is. So realistically, I should just cut that off there. And let's just work around it, all right? I've just changed my mind again. And those salvia lovers out there probably saying I'm an idiot. Don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's what my wife says every day. Now this one here's just got a shoot on the end there. And more than likely it'll burst up from behind. But we've got one here already. So, you know, let's open it up a bit. All right, we'll do that. All right, some people will be happy that I'm doing this. So that there's on the end. That's up there already. That's a little bit tall, but that's it for now. Don't have to be too precious with them. They're tough as nails, these bloody plants. Now these ones here, folks, have been hit by the frost a couple of times. Have a look at this. This is what I'm talking about, die back. That's just knocked it out. And we've got some growth coming on there. This technically should be taken with a head shears or a, you know, the trimmers and just cut it right down and shave it down to the base and get it to start up again from the bottom. This one here with the bicolor leaf has come back good again. In actual fact, I might give this just a little bit more time See, we've got growth coming at the bottom there. Now, why I'm not cutting this back so hard yet, because we haven't got as much growth developing. I know it's on the top there. You're going to say, well, it's already pushed out on top, and I should probably shave it down to the ground. My concern is because I've got such boggy soil here. We don't, the irrigation's down, but we don't turn it on. When it rains, it's, it's just like mud. Have a look at it. It's just turned to, and I've added compost and organic matter and, and you can see the straw breaking down. So this is due for another top dress and I'll probably have to do that within the next couple of weeks. Top dress all this with compost and some superfood and obviously the black grid. And then shave this, this one down as well as the other one there behind there. And then we'll give it a chance to take off. Mandarin's gone gangbusters, super happy. 
We've got one more sage or salvia to cut back, folks. Yeah, this is ready. Let's go over here. Let me show you it. Want to talk about boggy soil. This is my wettest bed, folks. This literally, it's like a flood and drain environment. We've got fennel growing here. I don't, don't ask me how we got it here. It literally is. Our strawberries haven't been dug up, so we've got to clean them out and top dress this whole bed there, compost it and raise it back up because it's so wet underfoot. And that's the salvia there that I'm talking about. Look at the dieback on that already. So that, all this has to be cut back. And as you saw earlier, I've already cut the other ones. Oh, just wait. Mm. Oh, I'm dribbling. Mandarines, grow some in your house. If you haven't got any, you're buying that stuff from the supermarket, you're kidding yourself. Oh, God. All right, that was my ray for my edibles. I'm back to the salvia. <laughs> Have a look at the middle. Look how dense it is. I've got to shave this right to the ground and cut all this right back, pull all this back away from it because it's grown out of control. So I'm not going to do it now because I haven't got the right tools here. I mean, I can hack into this actually, but I can't shave the rest of the plant. This is all the dye back and dead wood. Rather than watching me printing this, folks, why don't you just watch my dogs hunt a few rabbits while I do this? When I finish, I'll call you back. Well, we've got rid of the salvia, but we've got to get, cut some of this creeper back because it's literally smothering everything it's sitting on. Just got to open up the space. If you've got climbers, sorry, I should say, if you've got ground covers growing everywhere and they're starting to smother into the other plants, rest assured they will cause problems like this one here. Look at this. This tree was coming good, but then we had all this growing around it and it suffocated it. And plus we got such a wet, boggy soil. You saw the mandarin on that side, the high side doing really well. It's moist there, but nowhere near as moist as it is on this side. The kumquat there is taken off again. That was dying back as well. We cut that back hard. Look at all the fruit on it. We chucked some black grit on it. It's gone nuts again. So I've got to harvest all the fruit there. Now this one here, basically got to clean this area up again and it creates some space here for this uh, salvia to take off. It's what we want. See, look, there's wood in here. It's just getting smothered. So all this gets cut back and that's what you should do in your garden too. Because come springtime, as we are now, if you haven't cut it back already, Whatever's been smothered is going to be completely covered and you won't see it by summertime. Come next autumn, you'll be looking for your plants and that's what you don't want. And here, look at the dogs. This is where the dogs run around. They jump up and down in here, chasing bloody rabbits. Have they caught it yet? Who knows? There you are. We just cleaned that up a little bit. A bit more pruning around the other sides there, folks. Get out into your garden. Yesterday I was talking about pruning weeping cherry trees. I didn't realise how many people haven't got their heads around it yet. So we might do another segment on a more advanced one demonstrate how to clean up one that's a little bit out of control because I've had some emails come through with some crazy, crazy trees that haven't been pruned correctly or have just been neglected completely. And if you've got some salvias and things like that and you haven't done so, get onto them and cut them back, get them ready because they need to burst up now and get your compost into the soil, your superfood and black root as we're going to do here and just watch the garden thrive and come to life as the weather starts to warm up. Check out our website, VasilisGarden.com from 30 to 70% off a huge range of products online for you to enjoy. From Eva Silly, Maresi.